Welcome to Richards Bay on South Africa's northeastern coast for the fourth leg of the National Powerboat Championship, held during the National Ports Authority Richards Bay Port Festival. The event began under the shadow of the death of one of the stalwarts of South African powerboating, Bertus Lees, who just days before he was due to compete here, sadly succumbed to complications following a back operation. Series promoter Jan Johnson. The Richards Bay Port event is probably one of the most dangerous racing courses in South Africa. The very unforgiving harbour walls over here, they have a tea jetty sticking out smack bang in the middle of the course. It's a very, very tiny area in which to race. And on the one side, you've got some yachts parked in wood, and you've got a vicious right-hand corner um, around the Sunday Times boys. So it's going to be a very, very challenging course for the drivers. The Richards Bay event is going to be held to commemorate Baptist Luce. Um, at age 59, he died two days before the race on the 14th of December. He's been racing 20 years in Formula One power boating. Um, he was one of our very first drivers. That's the layout of the course. Notice how close they come to the beach on the left-hand side of your screen. The jetty sticking out and then the two right-hand corners. Richard Bay, it's, a, it's an unusual course because it's actually shallow on the edges. Uh, it's not that dangerous. Two years ago, I flipped here. Um, the rest, we've got very good rescue, so there's no problem in, in us, um, uh, what, Netcare 911. This course is one of my most favorite courses. I enjoy it. It's, a, it's an exciting course. It's got uh, many different technicalities to it. You know, it's got tight right-handers, tight left-handers, long drifting straight. The wind conditions here change constantly. So, you know, it can change, the weather can change three, four, the wind direction can change three, four times during the race. So, it's quite difficult. I enjoy it. Oh, look, it's tight, but it's a hell of a challenging course. I mean, if you get it right here, you get it right, which is great. You, you want to be rewarded for getting a course like this right, and that does happen here. Green flag down, and away The start of the first of three 15-lap heats, and the championship points leader Peter Lindenberg has pole position as they get underway. On his inside, he has his Team National Ports Authority colleague Ian Mather, the reigning champion with Timmy Featherston Hall of Port Alfred in third position. And that's the order in which they round the first few turn boys to complete lap one. Missing from the lineup today is Mark Shepard, who took the overall victory in the first leg of the series in Zanin last September and is lying third in the championship after three legs. So he's bound to lose that position with the likes of Tim Featherston Hall looking strong. Well, the two leaders in the championship are now also in positions one and two in this race. Peter Lindenberg in the colours of the National Ports Authority with his teammate Ian Mater still holding on to that second position. In fact, the MPA team have a third member in this race today, Lucky Redebe, who's come through the development programme and is currently the only black Formula One powerboat pilot in the world. He's currently in fifth position, chasing George Bashir, who's racing in the colours of Team WAP Alto RB10. Still third in the red and blue Ryobi Prison Management boat is Timmy Featherston Hall, who finished second overall in the previous leg of the championship in Benoni to Peter Lindenberg. Oh, and Cole Frankovic has some problems hitting the boy and is slowing down. Bringing up the rear in one of the older boats competing in the lights category, Skull van Tonda in the Core Networks boat. He's chasing Paul Reby and Andre van Diemen, the two leaders in the lights. That's Reby, he's flying the Bonatla colours as he chases down Andre van Diemen, while Skull van Tonda is closing in and Russell Chard, the local man, is also part of the picture in the battle for lights honours. But at the front of the field, the top three are still fighting for positions as they begin to lap the slower boats. That's Lucky Rodebi in the number 10 boat. He's been improving rapidly as the season has progressed, finishing fifth overall in the previous event after a ninth and a seventh, respectively, in the first two legs of the championship. Rodebi is going fifth position, while in fourth place is George Vashir, the former international sports car star and Lamar competitor who has found power boating to be a substitute for his previous car racing exploits. And in the battle for lights, honours, things have been happening. Early race leader Andre van Diemen has been slowing down. And this is the battle for the lead as Golf Antonda goes past Paul Reby. So now there's only the three boats left in the lights category, with local man Russell Chard and his team hire anything boat a distant third. We're on board with Peter Lindenberg as he comes up to one of the slower boats. That looks like Skull Fantonda, and this is when things can become very dangerous to the faster runners. With the amount of spray around the slower boats, they often don't see the leaders coming through, and an unexpected move can easily put them out of the race. 
Here's third place man Tim Fiddleston Hall coming through. He's just left Andre Van Diemen in his US Robotics boat. That's a 1991 Burgers hull. You can clearly see the difference in the design to the more modern hulls. Now things are getting very hectic at the front of the field as the three leaders continue lapping the slower boats. That's four boats going around the sharp left-hander at the bottom of the course, and the crowd here in the Richards Baseball Croft Harbour are certainly getting their money's worth of action. Lindenberg, Mather and Featherston Hall are coming up to lap fifth place man Lucky Radebe, who has hopefully seen them coming. There's no boat to pit radio communications, and often the pilots can't see or don't notice the warning flags. And there's a situation where Debbie has just cut across the bowels of race leader Peter Lindenberg, and that has allowed Ian Mather to close right up. And there goes Mather, he's gone into the lead, taking advantage of Lindenberg's momentary hesitation, and that's just what the reigning champion has been waiting for. The race has been taken its toll with a number of retirements already. That list includes Marius Krause in the Bell Equipment Colors, Karl Frankovich in his Protea Hotels boat, Andre van Diemen who has thrown in the towel, another car racer, and Brian Martin in the Caltex Havilene boat, all of them with mechanical troubles. That's Russell Charge still third in the lights class. On the final lap, and Lindenberg has been able to retake the lead. So here he comes as the checkered flag awaits. It's Lindenberg from Mather, who's just behind him. Tim Fiddleston Hoy could never really mount the challenge, but he finishes in a good third position. Now it's rough, <laughs> and I in the gas. I someone took the turn boy out, then someone took the second turn boy out. Yeah, it was rough. The wind is really strong. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. The boat performed better than expected. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, uh, all the hard work eventually paid off. Oh yeah, man, this is an exciting race. One hell of a race this is. Uh... So Lindenberg gets the first victory of the day. George Vashir in fourth ahead of Rodebe, while Skull Fantonda was a very happy man after taking the lights class win. Well, it's the middle of summer in South Africa and a huge crowd has turned up to watch the powerboats in action and enjoy the festivities of the Richards Bay Port Festival. Junior powerboat racing has become very popular in South Africa, with kids from the age of six taking part in their own championship. The juniors are divided into two classes according to age groups, and a former racer who now plays a role behind the scenes is Kirby Johnson. We had some very exciting racing. In the junior A class, Jean-Pierre de Vitz took the lead, followed by Laura Johnson, and then finally Dean Lazarus. There was a bit more drama in the junior B class for the babies. There was a slightly bigger field. And we also had one flip, and that was by Skulk Boerta. Skulk and Ferdy being our new twins, only seven years old, but some superb racing, and I think the kids really enjoyed themselves. The flag drops for the start of the second full of the one heat of the day, and to add more excitement, the starting grid was reversed, but Peter Lindenberg still gets in the lead on his way to the first turn boy. We have a camera on Timmy Featherston Hall's boat as the three leaders with Ian Mather in second position go around the first left-hander. Now around the second left-hander and Featherston Hall goes to the inside of Ian Mather. Oh, there's contact and Featherston Hall goes over. Mather is also upside down and it's a major accident right at the start of the second heat. Mather pops up so he's okay, but what about Featherston Hall? The rescue boat is there, great reaction time by them, but they head straight to the Featherston Hall scene as he's not surfaced yet. The race has been stopped and Lindenberg is also there. Yes, Featherston Hall is also out of his boat. What a relief. Let's have another look at that incident which could so easily have been much more serious. This is from Tim Featherston Hall's boat and he's got Ian Mather on his outside. They've just taken the start and they're racing towards the first turn boy. At this point, everybody still has to keep to their lanes, but once they've taken the turn, they're free to race. Lots of spray and then there's contact between Featherston Hall and Mather. Featherston Hall's boat gets launched into the air and then it just digs into the water at close to 200 kilometers per hour. The result is inevitable as the boat flips over and we're submerged. At this point, the pilot doesn't know where's up or down, and he has to loosen his seatbelts, open the canopy, and get to the surface while holding his breath. Fortunately, he's okay. Well, to be honest, this is actually my first swim ever. But I tell you what, calm down inside. First started getting a bit nervous, then realized canopy's open. Get her buckles off slowly, get out. Everything was fine thereafter. Unfortunately, it had to happen now. But hey, it's one of those things, it's racing. Do you know what actually happened? 
I can't really answer you. What happened all from my perspective was Ian and I went into the second turn after our start and Ian's boat seemed to hook down. And then I had to I tried to put mine down to avoid him, but mine slid on top of him and that was that. Off we went. I went into the, the, the NPA turn boy, uh, right opposite the NPA uh, marquee there and next minute I was going sideways. And uh, obviously Timmy had tried to come on my inside. It, it, it's scary if you know it's coming, but it's not so scary if it happens to you when you don't know it's coming. So, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just one of those things. It's happened, it's happened. We're going to get the boat ready for the next race. You're damn right, I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, as you can see on the side here, we've got a couple of bent uh, boulons. I've got a spare set of boulons, which I'm going to put on now. And away we go. Going down the short chute, the two boats were next to each other, but they were touching each other. And then going into the next one, the one boat was slightly behind the other one and uh, still touching. And then the next thing it looked like the one just got airborne, went straight over the other one and obviously took both boats out. Scary indeed, as we see how Ian Mather's boat also just dug into the water with the inevitable result. It's impossible to lay the blame at the door of any of the two pilots, so as both have acknowledged a racing accident and one that both of them are very lucky to escape from without any serious damage to themselves. Both, however, would not race in the restart of second heat as George Bashir gets a great start. Peter Lindenberg is slow off the line and remember that they have to keep to their lanes until they pass the first turn boy. Bashir has the inside line, however, and the momentum and now the race is on. What a great way to start the second heat for George Bashir, who has never led a Formula One powerboat race in South Africa. Here they come and Fashir has a good lead over Peter Lindenberg. Behind him, Andre van Diemen in his 1991 Burgess has gone into third position ahead of Russell Chard. So that's the battle for the victory in the lights class. But all eyes now on the battle for the lead as George Fashir and his Lazarus WAP Alto RB10 backboat is doing a great job of holding off the multiple former champion Lindenberg in the National Ports Authority colours. This race is likely to be only between these two in the absence of Mather and Featherstone Hall. But what a great show so far. Lindenberg is obviously playing the waiting game, but he cannot afford to take things too easy as Bashir has got the bit between his teeth. Now that he knows what it's like to lead a race, he's definitely going to try and get his first win. And look, into third place is Cole Frankovic in the Protea Hotel's boat. He's some way down, but it's still his best so far. Here comes Bashir, he's still racing on the circuits of South Africa, as well as making a name for himself in V8 racing. But after this, he'll be a force to be reckoned with in power boating too. Another car racer, Brian Martin, who was also racing saloon cars in South Africa for many years, and has taken part in his first ever Formula One power boating event, running in the Caltech's Haveling Colors, currently in eighth place overall. And still Lindenberg has not been able to find a way past this year. Lindenberg is determined to win the title again this season, having been put to the line by Ian May for last season. So without his main competitors in a position to take points away from him here, he's probably only going for the points. Meanwhile, in the midfield, the battle is on for fifth position between Russell Chard in the high anything boat and Lucky Redebe in the only other National Ports Authority boat. Bonatla boat in seventh being chased by Brian Martin who goes by as Reeby goes wide and here's the two race leaders with Lindenberg now closing in on George Fischer. This is Lindenberg's chance as we go on board. They're picking their way through the slower boats and again this can be a factor that can change the race order. Fischer is much less experienced than Lindenberg in lapping slower boats. Again, he's now up into seventh, and Lindenberg gets a run off Bashir as they come across the start finish line. And Lindenberg has gone into the lead. Lindenberg has just been waiting for his chance. He's a racer at heart, and he's not going to throw away a possible race win if he has anything to say about it. And it seems that George Bashir will have to wait a little longer for his first Formula One powerboat win. Russell Chard still second in the Lions category and here's Andre van Diemen who has obviously sorted out his first team gremlins and is lapping Paul Reeby in third position. It's the final lap and here comes Peter Lindenberg to take the checkered flag for the second time on the day and a great second place for George Bashir. Behind Andre van Diemen, local man Russell Chard was happy with his second in the lights. Excellent, uh, considering uh, we just got the engine on in time, we changed the engines between the first and second heat and we just managed to get in the water and I've never used the engine and it just worked perfectly. But for Marius Krauser it was the end of his race. As soon as I decided to pull away and give the motor a bit of gas, 
I just felt that the motor just started giving and I switched off, came in and I felt that and I saw the number three piston has decided to melt again. Not too good. I got out of the lockdown to about 6,000 RPM. I just couldn't get any more. I've got to go look at it and find it. I think I've got a gremlin somewhere. Hopefully the motor's not blown, but uh, I've got to be on the water for the 30th. Otherwise, I've got to sit on top of this man's boat in the bikini. That's okay. the bikini. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmation of the results of the second heat. Lindenberg from Fashir and Karl Frankovic in a great third position with Andre van Diemen winning the lights class. And as the spectators enjoyed the water and the sun, there was some hard work going on in the pits in preparation for the third and final heat of the day. The green flag drops to signal the start of the third heat of the day and they start in the finishing order of the previous race except that Ian Mather has been given the third starting position and Timmy Featherston Hall the fourth. Lindenberg gets a great start this time but look at Featherston Hall, he's already gone past Ian Mather and he slots into third position behind George Fischier. We're on board with Ian Mather and this is where the trouble started last time around. He's got Featherston Hall on his outside but no problems this time and Lindenberg is flying. Lots of jockeying for position going on in the rest of the field as Skull Fontondo goes through and that's Lucky Redeva in the third National Boards Authority boat. Lindenberg has got the hammer down, he wants to get out in front and open a gap, leaving the others to fight among themselves. With two wins behind his name already, he's well on his way to his third overall victory of the season and he wants those 20 championship points. George Bashir is holding on to a solid second place in his Lazarus Wap Alto RB10 boat, but behind him there's a huge fight going on for third position between Ian Mather and Timmy Featherston Hall. Karl Frankovic is in fourth, doing extremely well in his Protea Hotel back boat, and then comes the first of the lights boats, Andre van Diemen in the US Robotics colours. Lindenberg, and that looked like Skull Fontonda's core network's boat stationary in the background, so the yellow flags will be out on that part of the course and no passing allowed. Here's the battle for second place between Ian Mather in the second National Force Authority boat and Timmy Featherston Hoare in his Ryobi Prison Management back DAC. Andre van Diemen is still sixth overall and still leading the light category. The lights class have their own competition within the championship, although they also score points in the overall title chase. So van Diemen is looking at closing the gap to Karl Frankovic in fifth. In fact, he's got another incentive, as we saw earlier. Van Diemen and Paul Reeby have a private bet going. The one who loses against the other has to go on the winner's boat wearing a bikini. Here's the race leader, Peter Lindenberg, lapping his teammate, Lucky Rodebe, who's currently in seventh place behind Van Diemen, but still ahead of Brian Martin in the Celtics Evelyn boat. And somebody else is out as well. That looks like Russell Chart's orange colored team hire anything boat in the background. So yet another yellow flag situation as Peter Lindenberg continues to pull out a huge gap over George Bashir in second position. Yep, there's the yellow flag, but it doesn't seem like the situation warrants a race stoppage. As long as the pilots are all aware of the danger and it's not on the racing line, the race will continue. Ryan Martin just going past the stricken Skull Fontonda as fourth place Timmy Featherston Hall homes in on him to put the car racer a lap down. Featherston Hall has been catching Ian Mather, but the two yellow flags are not going to make it easy for him to pass. Peter Lindenberg is still absolutely flying and he's just lapped Featherston Hall. He's also just gone past Ian Mather who seems to slow down for a moment and Featherston Hall has taken him. Featherston Hall goes past Ian Mather to take third position. They're both coming up to lap Lucky Redebe, but well out in front is Peter Lindenberg, who's now lapped everybody except George Bashir in second position. This is Andre van Diemen, who's got Lucky Redebe between himself and Brian Martin. And here comes second-placed man George Bashir, who's been careful not to put his place in any jeopardy. With his fourth and second place so far, he's in a good position to get second overall for the day. That's a great shot from our chopper camera as Lindenberg continues on his merry way. He's absolutely dominated this race so far and incredibly is closing in on George Bashir in second position. We're on board again with Ian Mather and this gives you a good idea of the absolute commitment that is necessary to keep up the kind of speeds that these guys do. The water surface keeps on changing as the wakes of the other boats churn up the water and the pilot has to keep his concentration levels at their maximum as he not only has to keep an eye on the changing water conditions but also on what the other pilots are doing. Mather's shoulder injury took its toll and dramatically hindered his performance. 
just coming up to Skolfantonda's boat on the left-hand side and accelerating all the time as Mather seeks to find some smoother water. Andre van Diemen and behind him comes George Fischer still in second position. Behind him is the battle for third as Ian Mather has been hounding Timmy Featherston Hall ever since he'd been demoted to fourth and now he wants to come back. The reigning champion needs as many points as possible to at least maintain his second place in the standings. But Featherston Hall is resisting. The crowd is really being treated as this race is coming to a close. Van Diemen leading this group on the water, but of course he's down the order in sixth position. Then Featherston Hall and Mather, and incredibly Peter Lindenberg is catching the lot of them again. Mather is desperately trying to close the gap to Tim Featherston Hall, but he's struggling to get past Van Diemen, who takes the racing line now, and now Lindenberg is right on the tail of our cameraman. He was slowed there by Van Diemen, who cut across his bow, and there goes Lindenberg, who straightens out that line, and now Lindenberg has lapped his teammate twice. There's only three more laps to go, and even if something goes wrong for Lindenberg now, he's in a solid position to make it three in a row and win the event. The points for each heat are added together to determine the overall result of the day, and Mather would do well to salvage a third or fourth. Another great chopper shot as the race falls to a close. We're on the final lap, and Peter Lindenberg has been untouchable. He's driven absolutely superbly, taking the lead right from the off and picking his way through the traffic on his way to his third win of the day. So the lap of honour belongs to Lindenberg as we confirm the results of the third heat. Lindenberg from Fischier, Featherston Hoor and Mather with Frankovic in fifth ahead of the winner in the lights category, Andre van Diemen. He always has time for his young supporters, has our man Lindenberg, who's a legend in South African power boating circles, and also enjoys a great reputation as one of the most approachable of competitors. Now, I made up my mind I was going to go. I, I decided that if I had a good start, I was going to give it all I had, and just really try and run away, and that's what I did. And I did it for Berta, so good message. Now people, now fast old men can drive. And confirmation of the overall results. Lindenberg wins his third event in a row to extend his lead in the championship over Ian Mather, with Fischer getting his best results so far in second place. This program is brought to you by the National Ports Authority. Now to South Africa for Formula One powerboat racing in Richards Bay. Richards Bay on South Africa's northeastern coast is round four of the National Powerboat Championship here and it's proving a great day out for thousands of families. We showed the first of the three heats last week where Peter Lindenberg, one of South Africa's most well-known sportsmen, pipped Ian Mather for early points. Now we join our portside commentator for heats two and three. And to add more excitement, the starting grid was reversed, but Peter Lindenberg still gets in the lead on his way to the first turn boy. We have a camera on Timmy Featherston Hall's boat as the three leaders with Ian Mather in second position go around the first left-hander. Now around the second left-hander and Featherston Hall goes to the inside of Ian Mather. Oh, there's contact and Featherston Hall goes over. Mather is also upside down and it's a major accident right at the start of the second heat. Mather pops up, so he's okay, but what about Featherston Hall? The rescue boat is there, great reaction time by them, but they head straight to the Featherston Hall scene as he's not serviced yet. The race has been stopped and Lindenberg is also there. Yes, Featherston Hall is also out of his boat. What a relief. Let's have another look at that incident, which could so easily have been much more serious. This is from Tim Featherston Hall's boat, and he's got Ian Mather on his outside. 
They've just taken the start and they're racing towards the first turn, boy. At this point, everybody still has to keep to their lanes, but once they've taken the turn, they're free to race. Lots of spray, and then there's contact between Featherstone Hoare and Mather. Featherstone Hoare's boat gets launched into the air, and then it just digs into the water at close to 200 kilometers per hour. The result is inevitable as the boat flips over and we're submerged. At this point, the pilot doesn't know where's up or down, and he has to loosen his seatbelts, open the canopy, and get to the surface while holding his breath. Fortunately, he's okay. Well, to be honest, this is actually my first swim ever. But I tell you what, calm down inside. First started getting a bit nervous, then realized canopy's open, get her buckles off slowly, get out. Everything was fine thereafter. Unfortunately, it had to happen now. But hey, it's one of those things, it's racing. You know what actually happened? I can't really answer you. What happened all from my perspective was Ian and I went into the second turn after our start and Ian's boat seemed to hook down. And then I had to I tried to put mine down to avoid him, but mine slid on top of him and that was that. Off we went. I went into the, the, the NPA turn boy, uh, right opposite the NPA uh, marquee there, and next minute I was going sideways. And uh, obviously Timmy had tried to come on my inside. It, it, it's scary if you know it's coming, but it's not so scary if it happens to you when you don't know it's coming. So, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just one of those things. It's happened, it's happened. We're going to get the boat ready for the next race. You're damn right, I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, as you can see on the side here, we've got a couple of bent uh, boulons. I've got a spare set of boulons, which I'm going to put on now. And away we go. Going down the short chute, the two boats were next to each other, but they were touching each other. And then going into the next one, the one boat was slightly behind the other one and uh, still touching. And then the next thing it looked like the one just got airborne, went straight over the other one and obviously took both boats out. Scary indeed, as we see how Ian Mather's boat also just dug into the water with the inevitable result. It's impossible to lay the blame at the door of any of the two pilots, so as both have acknowledged a racing accident and one that both of them are very lucky to escape from without any serious damage to themselves. Both, however, would not race in the restarted second heat as George Fischer gets a great start. Peter Lindenberg is slow off the line and remember that they have to keep to their lanes until they've passed the first turn boy. Fischer has the inside line, however, and the momentum, and now the race is on. What a great way to start the second heat for George Fischer, who has never led a Formula One powerboat race in South Africa. Here they come, and Fashir has a good lead over Peter Lindenberg. Behind him, Andre van Diemen in his 1991 Burgess has gone into third position ahead of Russell Chard. So that's the battle for the victory in the lights class. But all eyes now on the battle for the lead as George Fashir and his Lazarus WAP Alto RB10 backboat is doing a great job of holding off the multiple former champion Lindenberg in the National Ports Authority colors. This race is likely to be only between these two in the absence of Mather and Featherstone Hall. But what a great show so far. Lindenberg is obviously playing the waiting game, but he cannot afford to take things too easy as Fashir has got the bit between his teeth. Now that he knows what it's like to lead a race, he's definitely going to try and get his first win. And look, into third place is Kolf Frankovic in the Protea Hotel's boat. He's some way down, but it's still his best so far. Here comes Fashir, he's still racing on the circuits of South Africa, as well as making a name for himself in V8 racing. But after this, he'll be a force to be reckoned with in power boating too. Another car racer, Brian Martin, who was also racing saloon cars in South Africa for many years, and has taken part in his first ever Formula One power boating event, running in the Caltex Haveling Colors, currently in eighth place overall. And still Lindenberg has not been able to find a way past Bashir. Lindenberg is determined to win the title again this season, having been pipped to the line by Ian Mather last season. So without his main competitors in a position to take points away from him here, he's probably only going for the points. Meanwhile, in the midfield, the battle is on for fifth position between Russell Chard in the high anything boat and Lucky Redebe in the only other National Ports Authority boat. Paul Reby in the Bonatla boat in seventh being chased by Brian Martin who goes by as Reby goes wide and here's the two race leaders with Lindenberg now closing in on George Fischer. This is Lindenberg's chance as we go on board. They're picking their way through the slower boats and again this can be a factor that can change the race order. Fischer is much less experienced than Lindenberg in lapping slower boats. Here comes Martin again, he's now up into seventh, and Lindenberg gets a run on Fischer as they come across the start-finish line, and Lindenberg has gone into the lead. 
Lindenberg has just been waiting for his chance. He's a racer at heart and he's not going to throw away a possible race win if he has anything to say about it. And it seems that George Bashir will have to wait a little longer for his first Formula One powerboat win. Russell Chard still second in the lights category and here's Andre van Diemen who has obviously sorted out his first heat gremlins and is lapping Paul Reby in third position. It's the final lap and here comes Peter Lindenberg to take the checkered flag for the second time on the day and a great second place for George Vashir. Behind Andre van Diemen, local man Russell Chard was happy with his second in the lights. Excellent, uh, considering uh, we just got the engine on in time, we changed the engines between the first and second heat and we just managed to get in the water and I've never used the engine and it just worked perfectly. But for Marius Krauser, it was the end of his race. As soon as I decided to pull away and give the motor a bit of gas, I just felt that the motor just started giving and I switched off, came in and I felt that and I saw the number three piston as this started to melt again. Not too good. I uh, got a lot down to about 6,000 RPM. I just couldn't get any more. I've got to go look at it and find it. I think I've got a gremlin somewhere. Hopefully the motor's not blown, but uh, I've got to be on the water for the 30s. Otherwise, I've got to sit on top of this man's boat in the bikini. That's okay. what I gave him <laughs> Confirmation of the results of the second heat. Lindenberg from Fashir and Karl Frankovic in a great third position with Andre van Diemen winning the lights.